About 3,000 hippies and travellers have arrived in convoys on a common in Worcestershire. Right, listen up, revellers. It's happening now and for the rest of the weekend. They've been joined by thousands of other people, and it's believed a party's being planned for tonight. So get yourself out of the house and onto Castle Morton Common. Happy, happy people. From where I'm standing, I can see the common covered with a huge camp of vehicles, buses, lorries, caravans and cars, with more expected during the day. And that's between Tewsbury and Ledbury on the A438. There's now a steady stream of travellers on foot and in vehicles making their way to shops in nearby Welland, and they seem set to stay on Castle Morton Common for the whole of the bank holiday weekend. Be there all weekend, parkour. This was the rave that changed the law. Oh, we just wanted somewhere to rave and enjoy ourselves. This is common land. I can't really see that we're hurting anybody. <laughs> Tens of thousands of youngsters on a common in Worcestershire, the party lasting for days over the May bank holiday weekend in 1992. With 20,000 people on this common and no toilets, you can imagine the mess they're going to leave behind them. The police powerless to stop the combined forces of New Age travellers and rave sound systems. The law doesn't give us permission to go and pick people up and move them, uh, and I would suggest it is with some difficulty you would either prevent 20,000 people moving or, in fact, if it's against their will, make 20,000 people move. The backlash, harsh. New Age travellers, not in this age, not in any age. The consequences, profound. A new offence of aggravated trespass would give police new powers over raves and new age travellers. In less than two years, the law had been changed. They're trying to make us illegal. They're going to make us nowhere to live, nowhere to party, nothing to do. They want us to disappear. The new law contained one of the strangest phrases anywhere on the British statute books. It criminalised large gatherings playing music, wholly or predominantly characterised by the emission of a succession of repetitive beats. The music you've been hearing for the last couple of minutes is Rave's answer to a protest song. Or Tekra's flutter is programmed by computer so that no two bars contain identical beats. The liner notes warn DJs to have a lawyer and musicologist present to confirm the non-repetitive nature of the music in the event of police harassment. I'm political journalist Tom Barton, and while this music might not have any repetitive beats, the next hour will have plenty as I bring you the story of the rave, the wrath and the repercussions. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Good, thanks. You? Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. A so, lovely day for it. A lovely place as well. This is astonishing. Thank Beautiful you. views. Our story begins in the Shropshire countryside. I'm meeting Barney Philbrick at his music studio in a converted barn next to the caravan he currently calls home. Here we, um, we record, uh, we produce, we mix and master music. For... So this is, this is where the magic happens. Big speakers, keyboards, mixing desks. Yeah, you've got to have some big speakers. Always, always helps with music. <laughs> Especially if you've grown up as a rave DJ. <laughs> Especially if you've grown up as a rave DJ. This studio is yeah, where Barney yeah. will mix tonight's programme, weaving in some authentic sounds from the early 90s as events unfold. And a decent, you know, decent record collection. I've been collecting records now for 40 years. So I've, I've managed to um, gather a few. Well, that's fairly balmy, isn't it? It's you know? very pleasant. Joining us yeah. on a video call in Barney's studio are four others, travellers and ravers, sharing their stories. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I have some very hazy memories, for sure. <laughs> Simone, known as Sim Simmer, one of the key members of the legendary Spiral Tribe sound system, 
organisers of some of Britain's biggest raves. Amazing. 21st century. I still feel like I'm living in the 20th century most of the time. Sorrel Sandland, a new age traveller. Yeah, um, can you hear me? I'm recording. Oh, Gary Mallard, a squatter, raver and political campaigner. Hi, Tom. And someone I know very well, my older sister and long-time New Age traveller, Kath. Oh Are we ready to roll? Yes. Yes. Yes, Tom. And as I roll that first piece of tape, these five will help guide me on our journey through the archive. This was the A38 earlier today with hundreds of travellers' vehicles holed up around the county. This motley collection of vans, caravans, buses and lorries is one of several parked in laybys at Morton Valence near Gloucester. And right at the start of our tale, an irony. There was never meant to be a rave at Castle Morton Common. When we finally moved off, the police had blocked all the entries. A convoy of New Age travellers had spent days engaged in a game of cat and mouse with police as they tried to gather for the Avon Free Festival, 35 miles to the south, near Bristol. That translates today as a pop concert. Among them, Barney. There were a lot of people who were planning to meet up around the Avon Free Festival, which was going to be the big one of the year. The travellers had expected to be moved on. They were doing everything they could to move people on, no matter where they stopped. At the moment, it's a standoff. Police say the travellers will not be allowed to stay in Gloucestershire. The travellers say they don't know where they'll go. There just seems to be a hell of a lot of police hassle. They really don't want a festival for what reason, I don't know. We don't really want any harm. All we want to do is um, enjoy ourselves. Everyone was sort of travelling towards the Avon Free Festival obviously wasn't being taken, people were being moved on. But late this afternoon, the travellers began to move from the site. The waiting game was over, at least for the time being. Round about six o'clock last evening, there was what appeared to be a coordinated move because all of the sites seemed to move at the same time. And then the police literally directed people onto Castle Morton Common. Uh, those were tracked through Gloucestershire and monitored by police officers away from this area. Quick to the scene, BBC, Hereford and Worcester. Hundreds of New Age travellers are continuing to arrive on Castle Morton Common near Malvern. They started arriving last night and say they're planning a huge party or festival. For the latest, live from the scene, Jerry Chester. From where I'm standing, I can see the common covered with a huge camp of vehicles, buses, lorries, caravans and cars, with more expected during the day. The travellers I've spoken to have come from as far away as Oxfordshire, Nottingham and the West Country. They're calling this a swan festival, and news that it was to be held has spread quickly down the travellers' grapevine over the past week. Everyone arrived, they chose their spot. They put up their marquees, they got out the sound systems, they put out lights, they set up cafes. It all came together pretty quickly. By the Friday evening, everything was in full swing because the, it went out on the six o'clock news on BBC that there was this massive rave going on. About 3,000 hippies and travellers have arrived in convoys on a common in Worcestershire after being evicted from the West Country. They've been joined by thousands of other people and it's believed a party's being planned for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what did they think was going to happen? Overnight and throughout the day, thousands of them have been arriving on common ground at Castle Morton near Morven in Worcestershire. They've told local people they're here for a festival and they expect 20,000 people to attend. The police say the site is not suitable for such an event and they're urging people to stay away. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Hats off to who let that flow. <laughs> we, we ought to give them a thank you in some ways, I think, for that brilliant publicity. It was definitely part of what brought so many people there, that news report. Over the next few hours, Raver Gary watched the festival grow and grow. One of the most amazing things I have ever seen in my life is after that news report, is sitting on the side of the hill on the, on the Saturday and just watching wave after wave after wave of car headlights appear on the horizon. 
But it wasn't just the six o'clock news that was letting people know what was going on at Castle Morton. Right, listen up, Revelers. It's happening now and for the rest of the weekend. So get yourself out of the house and onto Castle Morton Common on the B4208. And that's between Tewkesbury and Ledbury on the A438. Be there all weekend. Hardcore. Be there all weekend. Hardcore. Recognise that, Simone? Yeah, I was going to say that was me a few cigarettes ago. <laughs> that's what we used to do was we didn't have mobile phones we didn't have any of that kind of infrastructure so that's what we used to do is leave messages on our answer phone <laughs> i don't think i particularly knew that this one was going to be any more massive than the one before the other day i got you a can of brew you get some in return i get a quick sale you buy a can of brew we're both happy 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 people but massive this festival most definitely became and very quickly soon thousands of people were crowded onto the common among them bbc hereford and worcester's jerry chester cars began arriving in the early evening and by 11 o'clock there was a steady stream coming from the motorway Police could do little more than watch as cars drove down the single track road that crosses the common and by midnight it resembled a giant car park. Rumours of an all-night rave brought people from as far away as London. Locals fear both the numbers of people and the amount of noise and disruption will increase over the bank holiday. I seem to remember this is like impending sense of doom that it got so massive. I took a walk from the top to the bottom of the site and we were just like, oh shit, because we'd had so many creasing sort of brushes with the law sort of up until that point. And even though it's kind of gone down in history now as this amazing festival, it, there was a, a sinking feeling within that this wasn't good. I think the actual edginess there was created by police presence. There were helicopters constantly flying over. There were cameras around. There was a lot of interest and that, that edginess was that uncertainty of what might happen to something of that scale. Now, of course, Castle Morton is a village with residents. It won't surprise you to hear that maybe they weren't that delighted that you'd turned up. With 20,000 people on this common and no toilets, you can imagine the mess they're going to leave behind them. I live there, they're making my life hell, but I've been told not to antagonise that's right, that's them. Right. But I'll tell you what, everybody, there's no way this is going to be allowed to continue. That's right. No I way. I mean, it's ridiculous. The police are hoping the majority of partygoers will leave tomorrow. The pressure on them to restore peace to the area is growing. A special telephone hotline set up yesterday for residents has received hundreds of calls. We realise that the people down on Castle Morton Common have had their lives paralysed. Um, not just ruined, almost totally paralysed. We're aware of that and we hope people will start to move Monday night, Tuesday and very soon afterwards. I think it's important to note that we didn't choose that common. We didn't choose that location. We were being herded out of a county and that county's police force didn't care as long as we got out of there. So we kind of ended up at Castle Morton by accident. You know, I don't think anyone would have picked that location. Yeah, I agree 100%. We were almost much more cautious of limiting the amount of people that would be disturbed, for sure. We would never have pulled on next to a load of houses. By now, Sorrel, a traveller with no love of rave music, had arrived at Castle Morton. I called in there on the Tuesday to visit some friends that were parked up there who'd been there all weekend, so kind of got a sense that something really momentous had happened there. I think the thing that most residents of the Castle Morton area were incensed about was people pooing in their gardens. To be honest, travellers know to take a spade with them wherever they go and you bury your shit and that's what you do. But the townies that come in don't know not to rip down live trees and, and try to burn them. And it's going to wind people up, isn't it? But that's not who the travellers were. 
All the people Newsnight talked to today disclaimed causing damage. That, they said, was all done by the ravers, the battalions of city dwellers, acid house music fans, who cash in on these country parties at weekends and on bank holidays. Well, everyone who comes here is just to blame for dropping the litter. Obviously, you know, it, it's a party, so people are going to, you know, have a few drinks and a few ice creams and what have you. And obviously, you know, we're not going to leave it. You know, we, we, we do our best to sort of leave, leave the place as much, much the same as we found it. Unfortunately, yeah, I do feel sorry for these people, but they've only been invaded, to use the word, for three, four days of the year. You know, and hopefully we're going to leave here and in a week's time it will just be a distant yeah. memory. With thousands of travellers still camped on the common, the festival was already moving from being just a news story to a matter of national debate. Well now joining us from uh, Castle Morton Common itself is Michael Spicer, the local MP for South Worcestershire. Uh, Mr Spicer, uh, is this a total breakdown of law and order? The sheer size of this event and the unexpectedness of it has been a terrifying experience for people locally. Yes, it's been absolutely terrifying and it must not happen again in this form. Could I just be clear, Mr Spicer, are you then taking issue with West Mercia Police tonight when they say that they deliberately avoided a confrontation because they thought it was to inflame the situation and make it worse? Now, I think what you'll find that the police believe here is that their powers were very ill-defined in terms of what they could do to prevent this kind of um, event taking place. And one of the things that I want to do when we get back to Parliament next week is to ask some very serious questions. Good evening and welcome to Question Time, which comes to you tonight from Reading in Berkshire. If the members of the panel were residents of Castle Morton Village, recently invaded by so-called travellers, what would their reaction have been? The police really ought to be responsible for dealing with actual crime on your doorstep. Somebody in your garden hedge either taking drugs or rather more unpleasant um, activities. Really, something should be done to protect people from this actual crime, uh, let alone the fact that 20,000 people have turned up to commit these crimes. It is not just a question of the middle-class uh, sensibilities of the residents of Castle Morton which are at stake. It is a question of the rule of law. We cannot have a situation in this country where people are simply able to set the law at naught by being able to collect in sufficient numbers to be able to defy the police. The discrepancy between how they portray us and the reality of living that situation is, is unbelievable. When you hear Castle Morton described in those terms, I don't recognise that environment at all. I do recognise the political attack that comes from that language. That, that's a different thing. The time now is 21 minutes past seven. Landowners from Castle Morton in Hereford and Worcester go to court this morning to obtain a possession order to enable them to evict travellers still camped on the common. The majority of travellers have left the area, but police still expect that a hardcore may refuse to go. By Friday, the party was very much over. The travellers that remained busying themselves with tidying up. There was a huge concerted effort to leave the site as clean and as spotless as it had been when we arrived. We piled everything into bin bags, we cleaned the place. And we were used to doing this, so it probably didn't feel any different to sort of leaving to go to wherever we would normally be heading next. By lunchtime, the end was official. A judge has ordered the eviction of the travellers who've been camping on Castle Morton Common. Near... And by mid-afternoon, the common was all but empty. They left with the rain beating down on their caravans and trucks, their luck changing with the weather. 200 police had been drafted in, but less than 20 travellers' vehicles remained when officials arrived to serve the injunction, repossessing the common for the Malvern Hills Conservatives. I think, really, we're somewhat agreeably surprised at the cooperation, and they are going. If they had not have gone, I'd have to enforce my position here today under an high court action for possession of the land. As the trucks departed, police were facing some tough questions, and West Mercia's Chief Constable, David Blakey, was very much on the defensive. To gather the sort of numbers of policemen together to stop them going onto that common, and then to enforce it, would have been extremely difficult. 
I react very strongly to suggestions that we didn't act properly in those first hours, that we acted in a manner which was not proper policing, that we could have stopped them by physical means. But those physical means were very much at the force's disposal as the festival ended. In an operation which I believe is the first of its kind, we have identified all of the vehicles that caused that music and the people that operated those vehicles, transformers, loudspeakers, etc., etc., and we've arrested them. The public of Malvern can be satisfied tonight after listening to that noise for seven days that the people who've caused it are in my cells. Simone and other members of Spiral Tribe among those arrested in the days that followed. We'd got this little housing association flat in West Hampstead. We kind of used it. We used to like print off flyers. We had a photocopying machine. People would stay there every now and then. There was all kinds of sort of stuff there, people's sort of writing, sort of like, you know, diary stuff, all, all that kind of stuff. They took everything, literally every single bit of paper, everything that you can imagine. And obviously had a lot of fun sifting through it all, I guess. A lot of things from giving us sandwiches, chocolate, cokes. But while those who were arrested didn't stay in the cells for long, their vehicles weren't released when they were, which meant days after the festival, local reporters found about 20 people camped on reclaimed sofas under a plastic tarpaulin outside Worcester Police Station. Some of the 30 vehicles impounded by the police have already had prohibition orders placed on them because they're unroadworthy, and some of the others may be required as exhibits in any future prosecutions. But mine's like an A-registration transit. It's got service history. Tax insured, MOT, I've got a full clean driving licence, and still they're holding it. You know? It's just it's not right, is it? It's really it's not, not right, right when there are when there are kids and there are people who have got to get their homes back yeah. who need somewhere to live. The police in Worcester are considering releasing some of the vehicles they seized. They said if the travellers had proof of lawful possession of them, they should walk across the road and apply formally for the return of their homes. West Mercia police did eventually return the vehicles, but while the travellers got back on the road, the debate about Castle Morton was reverberating far beyond the common and into the commons. New age travellers, ravers and racketeers and drugs arrived in the strength of two motorised army divisions. This is Michael Spicer, the local MP. Complete with several mass bands, and above all, a highly sophisticated command and signal system. Army, army. What they failed to do was to bring their latrines. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers, speed, and efficiency with which they arrived, massing probably at one time to as many as 30,000 people, combined to terrorize the local community to the extent that some residents had to undergo psychiatric treatment in the days that followed. The language they used to describe what was going on was kind of completely alien to us all because it wasn't actually what was happening. And so when you hear an MP like that then turning it round into something that absolutely uh, the, the opposite to what it was. As the debate continued, Tory MPs tested the lines of rhetoric that would be used time and again over the next couple of years as John Major's government aimed its political firepower at those living alternative lifestyles. These people, the New Age travellers, are sustained in their lifestyle by, as my honourable friend, mobile social security, but a set of regulations which at this time enable them to pick up their social security payments wherever they happen to be in the country. In all the counties yeah. represented yeah. here tonight, and there are cares. hundreds of police being diverted weekend after yeah. weekend by cares? these miserable people, and it has to be brought to a stop. Yeah. Yeah. And while the political battle lines were being drawn inside the House of Commons, out on the road, the battle lines more often involved things like riot shields, truncheons and helmets. As the police spotter plane runs overhead, there are lines and lines of policemen. As travellers and rave sound systems faced ever harsher treatment wherever they went. Many of them are in riot gear, full riot gear, with helmets up, though, at this stage. 
So the police has just that. served the first notice under the Section 39 of the Public Order Act, directing all those people illegally encamped on this site to vacate the site within a reasonable practicable time. We would like you to leave. We have come I don't find the answer for that there. We have come onto this site why because of the amount of damage that's been done. Why have you come with riot helmets on? And why have you come with visors on? And why have you come with batons? My friend. A lot of us had already experienced this from Stonehenge and the festivals after that. It wasn't the norm, but it was certainly something that became more accepted. I'm saying that what your, your stance We've is come intimidating here very reasonably. and threatening. There was a fraction of people in the travelling community who were getting very angry with the way that we were treated, continually moved on. It, it was impossible to live any sort of normal life and it all became very difficult. And soon for Barney life was to become even more difficult. Two weeks after Castle Morton there was another festival and a group of us got arrested. We were dragged out of vehicles as we left. We were thrown to the ground. We had our homes impounded and we were on bail for a year before Crown Court proceedings. Barney was eventually acquitted. Now, despite Castle Morton's size and its impact, not everyone on the travelling scene had been there. Take my sister Kath, for example. I'll be frank here, I wasn't a party animal and I wasn't up there at the front of, of all the raves uh, when Castle Morton was on. The whole site emptied and I sat, but stayed behind and revised for my exams. But while Kath studied for her university finals, she was starting to notice the impact of the festival in some surprising ways. In the aftermath, I think there was certainly a sense that we were the centre of attention. There was a lot of media frenzy. We were living on site in Norfolk and the Eastern Daily Press came out and did a piece on us on site, which the previous year we'd have probably just been quietly left alone. There was a sense that we were being portrayed as a movement. We were gathering momentum, we were pushing against convention and we were therefore to be contained. That was the sense that was building in the media. The Six O'Clock News from the BBC with John Humphreys and Chris Lowe. Good evening. The headlines at six o'clock. Thousands of travellers have ignored a court order to leave an illegal campsite in Wales. And now there are calls to change the laws on trespassing. Many of the travellers did seem prepared to go, but in their own time. You can't expect everybody with kids, babies, dogs to tack down and be ready at ten o'clock in the morning. That's a ridiculous thing to expect, you know. So it'll be... Sometime later on today, I suppose. Shortly after this morning's deadline, the police said they understood some travellers needed fuel to move their vehicles and may leave on Thursday after collecting state benefit to pay for it. Farmers at Llanbister Common, 10 miles south, have been blockading country lanes this afternoon. Farmyard slurry has been liberally applied to the land where last year's festival took place. Welcomes were not generally open armed, and, and <laughs> you came across more and more places where people had parked up on, on common land often or uh, laybys and so on, blocked off with rocks and piles of earth and so on. Clean it up and then we can climb up, just drag it up. Hang on there. And yet, despite everything, the sound systems were determined to keep the free parties on the road. Well, we're joining them all up. But as this group of teenagers in the west of England found, often their attempts to put on a rave were stopped before they'd even begun. Now, oh, dear. this is Mr. Dad. This is his piece of land, all right? <laughs> all right. Now, you you tell them what you just told me, because I asked you whether uh, there was permission. No permission whatsoever to move anything on here at all. As far as I can turn your trespassing. If I anticipate there's going to be a breach of the peace from your efforts down here, mm -hmm. then I shall ask you to disperse. Does it does it mean no matter what we do, then it's going to be a breach of the peace, really? That will be a matter for me to consider, given what you're going to produce. OK. Killjoys, a lot of them. Yeah, pack it up then. Yeah. Pack it up, we get all the gear home. Get some yeah. Let's get the stuff we don't need home and go and set up some yeah. yeah. yeah.
Of course, sometimes the sound systems would get the better of the authorities. Hello. How's it going? All right. How you doing, then? Simone and her fellow spiral triber Debbie explained how to Radio 4's Tim Maybe. No one actually organises a site, you know, or anything. Everyone just heads there, and you know, so before you know, it, a site's taken, and that's it. It's a festival. How do you get other people to join you? Word of mouth, really. And, it, and again, it, it does seem to operate on this sort of telepathic wavelength. I mean, you know, you might think nobody knows about a party, and then before you know it, a thousand people are suddenly there. Listen up, Revelers, it's happening. But remember Simone's answer phone message? So get yourself out of the house and onto Castle Morton Common. That was a thing of the past. We used to have the a phone, phone line, and, but um, that got cut off after Castle Morton. But, I mean, that, I mean, that was Why? just an ordinary phone line. Why was it cut off? Um, presumably because it was getting people to parties. Was that me? It was. It was you and Debbie. OK. We never set out to be this sort of political. We were kind of made political. And so, obviously, we wanted to try and get across that it wasn't how it was being portrayed. How come we are all of a sudden being persecuted because we want to dance in a field? This summer at Castle Morton and other places saw outrageous and unacceptable examples of the problems caused by New Age travellers and ravers. While Spiral Tribe were getting political, so were the politicians. Most people were as sickened as I was by the sight of these spongers descending like locusts, demanding benefits with menaces. We are not in the business of subsidising scroungers. The Prime Minister has accused the Eurosceptics of tilting at windmills like Don Quixote. John Major, in the middle of fighting his backbenchers over Europe, devoted nearly two minutes of his party conference speech in 1992 to the subject of New Age travellers. And there's another problem we're dealing with. The illegal occupation of land by so-called New Age travellers. Scourge of the nation. You will have seen the pictures on television or in the newspapers. If you live in the West Country and Wales, you may have seen them on your own doorstep. Farmers powerless, crops ruined, livestock killed by people who say that they commune with nature but have no respect for it when it belongs to others. New Age travellers, not in this age. Not in any age. Mm, remember that quote. They say we don't understand them. Well, I'm sorry, but if rejecting materialism means destroying the property of others, then I don't understand. <laughs> if doing your own thing means exploiting the social security system and sponging off others, then I don't want to understand. And if alternative values mean a selfish and lawless disregard for others, then I won't understand. I wonder who wrote that for him. Let others speak for the New Age travellers. This party will speak for their victims. It was unbelievable that we could be described in that way because none of us went out there to destroy other people's property to do all these unspeakable things that that he, he goes on about. It just exacerbates the sort of, you might not have been there for a, re, a political reason in the beginning, now you kind of really realise what utter rubbish that they come out with and it just makes you distrust them even more. And finally, a sign of spring as sure as crocuses, daffodils and tiny lambs. Yes, it's the first New Age convoy of the year in confrontation with the police. I suppose a case of spring has sprung, the grass has rears, I wonder where the hippies is. The beginning of a new year didn't bring an end to the political, media or police focus on New Age travellers. From the United States comes the stinger. Criminals in the US are being stung by the police who are using the device to stop getaway cars, car thieves and joyriders. The police are still embarrassed by their inability to prevent the occupation of Castle Morton Common near more than two years ago by 20,000 travellers. Now they believe the stinger is a cheap and effective way of dealing with any attempts to repeat the illegal music festival. We will stop everyone traditionally, but if they proceed on, uh, they will be at risk of having their tyres deflated in a controlled and safe, tested manner, but nevertheless, uh, 
they will have their tyres deflated. There were a million different tactics. One of the most bizarre was having a police officer bang on the bus door at six o'clock in the morning and he was in a full biological white suit and he said, don't, don't get out the bus, there's anthrax here. And I said, what? I was a bit, bit bleary eyed and looked at my girlfriend and we said, well, there's no signs. And then we noticed a WPC sat in the car, absolutely wetting herself in hysterics <laughs> at this policeman who had tried to scare us off with anthrax. At Castle Morton, no processions are allowed inside a five-mile exclusion zone. As the anniversary of Castle Morton Common rolled around, the authorities were putting ever tougher measures in place to stop festivals and free parties from taking place. All police rest days have been cancelled, but despite all the precautions, just one traveller has been turned back. We've got all sorts of contingency plans which we are prepared to put into operation if necessary. We have reserve officers, we have trained officers in PSU equipment, in riot gear, etc, etc. And if necessary, we are prepared to physically block roads to prevent access into Castle Morton. It just amazes me the amount of public money that went into these operations. There's some things that are far more important to spend public money on than a bunch of youngsters having a party in a field. By this time last year, the first groups of travellers had arrived for what became the invasion of Castle Morton Common. But as you can see right now, apart from the sheep, I've got it all to myself. Today's rebels, the new age travellers, aren't welcome. Soon, though, it wasn't just the police who were trying to stop the travellers. Some traditional allies were also turning against them, including the organiser of the Glastonbury Festival. When they were allowed in, Michael Evis says they brought with them drugs, drunkenness and violence. He's erecting eight miles of fencing and spending £300,000 on policing to keep them out. You know, I've had a five-year apprenticeship of looking after travellers and it ended in, in total chaos. There's 50,000 pounds worth of damage to Land Rovers and things. Um, unprecedented chaos, actually. And I was actually sick to death of it when I'd given them um, milk and telephones and blankets and a site and fire and, and all manner of things that we provided for them. And I have a warrant for repossession of this, this, this land. Would you please vacate it at once? <laughs> And while police often kitted out in riot gear chalked up one victory after another, the political attacks on raves and the traveller lifestyle grew in volume. And the dreadful antics of the New Age travellers at the way they invaded peaceful countryside caused decimation to uh, many peaceful villages and then uh, rampaged through the countryside having raves uh, lasting two and three days showing a total disregard for the area that they were in. While Tory MPs like Nigel Evans were appalled, well, the member could obviously one backbencher was willing to come to the defence of the free party movement. If large numbers of people are prepared to congregate together in the spirit of having festivals or whatever else... This is the then little-known Labour MP, Jeremy Corbyn. Then perhaps there is a need to address that wish by large numbers of young people rather than simply drive it away. Driving it away from one area doesn't solve the problem. It merely moves the problem down the road to some other place. But the future Labour leader's voice was a lonely one as travellers like Kath found themselves increasingly facing political fire. The bandwagon is there to be jumped on by politicians to sort of motivate the middle Englanders, if I can use that phrase. Those type of voters that the Tories like to, to woo are easy pickings if you can vilify a movement that's bucking the trend. They call themselves New Age Travellers. In Gloucestershire, Madam Speaker, they're known as New Age Vermin. Well, I sympathise, Madam Speaker, very strongly with the citizens of Gloucester in the trouble that they've actually faced with New Age travellers, and I warmly congratulate the police on the action they've taken. We are examining what further legislative measures can be taken to give the police more powers. And with Europe and Sleeves putting John Major under increasing pressure, details of those new powers soon started to emerge. Prime Minister, do you, uh, do you accept what many in your party have said openly, and rather more say privately, that you are now, as Prime Minister, on probation? <laughs> no, I don't. 
I'm not going to waste my time with this extraneous, often anonymous chat. What I am going to do is to concentrate on the things that matter to me. The centrepiece of next year's parliamentary programme will be Home Office bills, and in particular a very large criminal justice bill that will deal with squatters, ravers, new age travellers, and a whole range of other issues like that. With the political temperature rising, the arguments over rave culture were moving from the real world to the fictional one. Well, can't you go to turn the noise down? It's deadly. And into millions of living rooms via EastEnders on BBC One. What's going on? They're waiting for someone to cancel noise officer or something. Don't think they're going to do anything then. But this is dreadful. How are people going to get to sleep tonight? Search me. You know, when it starts being 30 years later, you think, whoa, you know, that was quite an impact we all had. I think just far too busy sort of living day to day at that point to sort of really appreciate the enormity of the impact. Good afternoon, Sid. I'll point as quick as you can. Oh dear, what's the matter with you? In the Archers, right here on Radio 4, Eddie Grundy was getting creative as he tried to find a way to persuade a group of travellers to leave his land. Blasted new age travellers. What's this? Your buzzing pals last week. Well, that's before they invited all their mates to come and party. They're not having a festival, are they? Well, not if I can help it. These people have even made it on to the archers. And no, Geoffrey, I don't at this point mean you. <laughs> well, I've got some good news for Ambridge. When our new laws are in place, Eddie Grundy won't need to spray manure on his fields to get rid of them. <laughs> In many parts of the countryside, the barricades are going up. Villagers, farmers and landowners have been living in fear of being invaded either by New Age travellers or all-night rave parties. But now the government has promised a crackdown. As viewers of BBC One's Country File heard at the start of 1994, that new law was in the works. Today we have a Country File guide to the new proposals and we ask, will they work and are they fair? anyone on private land if they damage property or the ground itself if they bring on more than six vehicles then they can be told to go even on common land the police will have the power to remove vehicles and anyone who disobeys their orders can be arrested the maximum penalty three months in jail or a two and a half thousand pound fine it's as far as i can see we will not be allowed to travel in this country anymore is going to wipe us out completely and, and basically change the country so much so that no one's going to be allowed to do anything but live in a house. The measures are contained within the Criminal Justice Bill, currently before the House of Commons. And the Home Secretary, Michael Howard, says he wants it to become law as soon as possible. I announced the most comprehensive package of measures to tackle crime ever announced by our Home Secretary. We'd felt this ramp up of pressure, so when it came, nobody was surprised. You know, we, we really valued what we had. It wasn't a case of, yeah, we want to fight you. It was a case of, what we have is something worth protecting. Can he tell us upon what measure he will judge the success of this? Right. Will it cut crime or will it not? And if it doesn't, will he accept it's failed? But for all Tony Blair's questions about the bill as it was introduced into the Commons... He will abstain and his party will abstain. The young shadow Home Secretary was drawing fire from Michael Howard over his decision to neither back the new law nor oppose it. The police want all these things, the public wants all these things, and the Labour Party can't even make up its mind as to what it will do about them. The case is being heard under a little use practice called common law. The ravers weren't just facing political pressure. The wheels of justice were also turning. The travellers' vehicles formed three circles so that people could dance and listen to the music. These were called Spiral Tribe, Bedlam and Surplus Walk. A criminal case being brought against those accused of organising the Castle Morton Common Festival. Simone choosing to plead guilty rather than face a Crown Court trial. I just had a baby when the case came to, to court and I couldn't sit in court breastfeeding. So I, I had to put in a plea of guilty. That was pretty awful. Um, but I would speak to everybody at the end of each day and sort of 
listen to the process. I mean, I was quite happy not to have sort of gone there for however many weeks it was. And the time is 21 minutes past seven. Britain is to have a new union of new age travellers and rave organisers. They're worried about new laws, specifically the criminal justice bill now going through Parliament, which they think will make their way of life illegal. Debbie stokes the fire, pours the tea, checks on her three children upstairs and then puts on a record. This is... Dope on Wax, my favourite DJ at the moment. This terraced house in a North London suburb is the operational headquarters of the Advanced Party Network. We're fed up with being discriminated and pushed around by the police and the authorities, and we have basic rights and freedoms, and we would like to keep those rights and freedoms. Now is the time for us to create a voice and say, we want to continue to peacefully gather together. We see no harm in what we do. The Criminal Justice Bill refers to sounds wholly or predominantly characterised by the emission of a succession of repetitive beats. But while the opposition was getting organised, there was no let up in the pressure to stop the parties. Who are the organisers? Do you know, do you know the... The name is uh, Extra Pleasure. Extra pleasure. Either from the police or the politicians like Tory party vice chairman Patrick Nichols. I'm more concerned with the reaction of my constituents, uh, ordinary people going about their life and wishing to do so without being grossly disturbed by other people who couldn't give them monkeys for their convenience as well. That's what we're trying to deal with and uh, perhaps it should have been dealt with before. The point is, it's being dealt with now. One of the defence barristers, Sandy Munro, said that for many, the rave was good business. While the politicians were doing all they could to deal with the travellers and ravers, the establishment was about to face a major setback in the courts. In the end, the jury acquitted all ten people who denied causing a public nuisance by helping to organise the Castle Morton Common Festival. Totally ecstatic about the whole thing. I look at it as though the government have just spent £4 million on... It's like a college course. They've trained us how to put on parties without getting arrested. At the end of the 10-day trial, which cost £4 million, there's been just one conviction, a woman who admitted causing a public nuisance. But in the light of today's not guilty verdicts, the prosecution says it will now reconsider her case. And Simone, despite that earlier guilty plea, was allowed to walk free. I think that was all done on the day. You know, everyone was acquitted. The solicitor called me and said, yeah, look, this is going to happen. So, you know, I was essentially acquitted the same day, really. And how did that feel? Um, amazing, <laughs> like a massive sense of relief. <laughs> How important was that victory for you guys, both as individuals facing a possible criminal conviction, but also as Spiral Tribe standing up to the man? I mean, it was massive. Everything, I think, that was used as evidence by the prosecution was just completely flipped into a not guilty verdict, you know. You had the six o'clock news, you had all the helicopter footage of the site left completely clean. So all these things of us being a danger to society and sort of reckless and irresponsible were actually really flipped on their heads. So in that sense, it was massive. They're trying to make us illegal. They're going to make us nowhere to live. As 1994 rolled on and the criminal justice bill progressed through Parliament, the opposition took to the streets time and again. Kill the criminal justice bill! The Downing Street gates became a focus as three times they withstood human battering rams that shook the very posts. The final, largest protest that October saw violence flare between police and protesters. After the breakup of the demonstration, thousands of young people stayed behind, dancing and playing music. The feeling amongst the people on the demo was incredible. It was so high that everyone was there and we were all united and we all knew why we were there and how important it was to try at least to, to stop this new bill. In Hyde Park, they were told to move and confrontation with the police quickly followed. The worst violence was in Park Lane, 
Young people crowded behind the park railings threw rocks, bottles and sticks at the police who charged dozens of times. When you've got mounted police coming storming towards you and uh, hitting people with truncheons, you, it, it just sends this, this wave of fear through the crowd. And obviously some people reacted in a bad way to their fear. This went on for more than two hours. As the light faded, more police were brought in, more missiles were hurled, and there were more charges. Eventually, the police pulled back. They waited, listening to the taunts of the crowd. November 1994 saw a final push from those opposed to the new law. All day, police have been preparing for the worst. Up to 2,000 officers, some on horseback or in riot vans, have circled the area around Westminster. As protesters gathered outside Parliament, hoping to persuade MPs to vote against the bill... It is totally impracticable. ...inside, its final provisions were being agreed. The eyes to the right, 298. The nose to the left, 272. So the eyes have it unlocked. Did it feel like a failure? that you hadn't managed to reverse the machine of politics that was pushing in this direction. Did we ever think we were going to beat them? I don't, I think the resistance was more important than the end result. You're not going to beat them at their own game. But what we did and the resistance that was offered and the amazing creative responses from all sorts of people and organisations, that was a very positive result of what they tried to do. But the passage of the new law didn't see off its many opponents. The protesters used ropes to scale the high roof of Westminster Hall, apparently under the noses of security staff. It's the latest in the long series of protests against the criminal justice bill, which became law yesterday. The only thing that we intended to do was to get the banner up to make sure people were aware that this is actually law now. The Criminal Justice Act is actually law now, and we will not sit still for it. There are millions of people in this country who will be protesting and will continue to protest about it because it is categorically wrong. And campaigners made good on that promise, continually testing the new law with a series of mass trespasses, invading Michael Howard's back garden and the Prime Minister's official residence. Major, major, major! Oh, oh, oh! At Checkers, the police lined up to stop campaigners getting close to the house, but didn't give them the satisfaction of arresting anyone. Trespassers on private property are not high on a public sympathy list. But it's travellers who feel most threatened by the act, which gives the police tougher powers to move them on. It's a fundamental erosion of some of our most basic democratic rights. And it enshrines intolerance and division. It basically says, you know, you either conform or you're criminalised. But many travellers and sound systems found a third way and took dramatic action. I can remember talking to a friend and he was saying, oh, it's almost like rats leaving a sinking ship. There were so many people leaving England at that point to go and try and find somewhere where it was an awful lot easier to park up, to not get hassled, to live peaceably, to, you know, live your life as you wanted to live it. Kath, was this law part of your motivation for deciding to hop on the ferry and go over to France? I mean, I guess, yeah, looking back, that was probably part of the motivation, but it was also, you know, we, we were living in the moment and it was, OK, right, well, things are getting tricky here. It sounds more fun abroad, let's go. <laughs> 30 years on from Castle Morton, the consequences of that week and the law it spawned are still being felt. I've been out of the UK for, it'll be 28 years this year. I've been living in Spain for almost 24 years. It's my home. I arrived here on the back of five years on the road in Holland, France, Portugal, France again, before I came down here and found a community who were very, very welcoming. And every time I go back to England, I'm more glad that I'm not there anymore. I was with Spiral Tribe for a while, then I went back to England, then I came out and lived in France for about 10 years, and now I've actually got a little house in Sicily. So Sicily is my home, but 
from those early heady days, you know, my friends are now all over Europe, all over the world. Now I'm working with a bunch of people in Russia called uh, Mutabo, which is the biggest underground techno club in Moscow. Very happy to be away from the United Kingdom. I can feel as much pressure in from different directions in the UK as I can walking the streets of Moscow, where I currently live. So, uh, yeah, it definitely had an effect, the Criminal Justice Act. And uh, I was very glad to leave the UK on a personal level and on a social level as well. Dreams. On one level, was the Criminal Justice Act successful on its own terms? because what the Tories wanted to do was to get rid of travellers and free parties from Britain. Did it largely succeed? That directly led to me personally saying, well, if you're not going to let me live my lifestyle here, then I'm going to go and do it somewhere else. But we haven't gone away. I'm 51 now and I'm, I'm still living in the truck and that's my home. My youngest son, I'm proud to say, has a sound system and is putting on free parties with his friends it did at the time have a devastating impact on our community in that moment it dissipated us but the movement itself lives on and you know we're still at it <laughs> and so are our kids and we're trying our very best in this country and abroad to live the simple lifestyle that we've chosen mm -hmm.